Hey guys, welcome back to another Dad Mods video. This is specifically on the shoebox Ford, and what we're doing today is we're gonna talk about trailer hitches. So um, I haven't found any information specific to the shoebox Ford. I haven't found any trailer hitches specific to the shoebox Ford. So there's kind of a whole lot of nothing out there for something that I would like to think is a fairly common question with these. If you've got a classic car, you probably want to be able to tow a teardrop trailer behind it or a little pop-up or maybe you want to have um, a scooter on a rack or bicycles or something like that. You're trying to go away for the weekend well, it's kind of a bummer if you're limited to what you can store inside the car. Yes, there's a lot of storage room, but how are you gonna fit a bicycle in here? You're just, you're not. So um, this is something that is really important to me and I've been wanting to get figured out is how to uh, make a trailer hitch work on the back of this thing. Now, back in the day, maybe there was some kind of aftermarket company that was building them for these cars. I haven't found a whole lot of info out there um, and what, possibly could have been built at one point is most certainly not still in production. So what I'm using is I have the Reese uh, 37042 uh, multi-fit trailer hitch model. And this is intended for SUVs, vans, pickups, basically like Dodge Caravans to S10s. And it's got an actual bolt together multi-fit setup. So these guys slide in, bolt can go through it, and there's a bunch of different places where you can bolt it together. Now, what I had found that I don't feel super great about is that the width of this thing is significantly more than the Shoebox Ford's, um, or the, the Shoebox Ford is much wider than this hitch. So it pushes it beyond its um, intended bolting locations. So. Um, there might be a multi-fit model out there and it'd be great if anybody does find that to please share that information in the comments because that might share, uh, save somebody else a little bit of time. But I got this hitch and I'm going to try and make it work, but I'm going to use some different pieces to, to achieve that. So we're going to use the center section. It's perfect. It's a simple bolt together setup and um, it has an inner diameter, if you want to call it that, you know, the inner dimension is two inches. So what you can do is you can use a very basic piece of two inch square tubing for the pieces that are gonna slide through this thing. So I just happen to have a bunch of that already kind of sitting in the, um, the storage for the, my steel storage and it's really thick walled already. So what I'm gonna use is I'm gonna fabricate off of that. I'm going to gusset the hell out of it. I'm gonna put reinforcing pieces into it Basically, I'm gonna try and make this thing as over-engineered as I possibly can uh, for its intended purposes. So, let's talk about its intended purposes. We al alluded earlier to the um, things that you might wanna do with it, uh, you know, with camping and that kind of thing. That's precisely what my intentions are. So this hitch is rated depending on its uh, configuration, uh, if you're using it for the intended vehicle it's rated for either a class three or a class four. So that means um, on the lower end of the spectrum, you've got a 350 pound tongue weight. Um, on the upper end, I wanna say it's class four, I think it's 500 pounds. Um, don't quote me on that. It'll just, you guys will wanna double check that. But um, basically what that limits you to is um, much, just a lot smaller uh, capacity things. So smaller boats, smaller campers, um, smaller trailers, all of that. And it's really rational to think about it that way because these cars are not exactly um, set up the best for towing in the first place. They're not the heaviest duty frames in the world. You have drum brakes all the way around if it's factory. You've got a 100 horsepower flathead V8, or I think it's like 100-ish horsepower um, inline six, both of which are fine for towing a decent amount of weight, but it's the car all around it that you have to think about as well, all the way down to steering. You know, that's one of the things, I, I did a clip swap on this thing where I chopped it off and I put an S10 clip on it. Um, the steering setup on these from the factory is dicey. And when you take and you put a lot of weight on the back end of it, um, it's gonna make the front end lighter. It's gonna make the steering even a little bit sketchier. So you wanna be very, very careful about what you're gonna be towing behind anything like this. Um, these hitches are meant 
for a specific vehicle and they've tested it and they've made sure that it's safe to tow the ratings that they're set for. So we're doing a little bit of this blind and the consequences of getting it wrong is pretty significant. You might cause an accident. That's a lot to have on your conscience, <laughs> you know, and I have no liability for what you guys do and your fabrication skills. So if you're watching this, only use it for ideas, but you are ultimately responsible to do your research, make sure that you've got a skilled welder doing any of it, or if you're talented enough to do it yourself, and then safety, safety, safety. <laughs> so anyways, all right, so here's what the game plan is. Um, this guy, I need it to go wider than it's, what it's intended for, but they've got these other brackets that work to go on the top side of a frame or on the underside. Well, that's perfect because on the underside of our frames in the back, um, this fits on there pretty damn good. So I'm gonna use a traditional bolt up to the frame style setup, which is gonna require drilling a couple of holes and um, getting the um, carriage bolt style plates that go on the top side to sandwich it down. Um, and then I'm going to uh, weld uh, square tubing to the these end pieces so it's going to be all bolted together these end pieces are going to slide in here and more than likely i'm going to weld it all solid because what i'm going to be doing also is tying other pieces so say that this is the very back of the frame this is where the bumper is back here um she's going to bolt up here that it's going to bolt you know this or rather the piece of steel gets welded on more towards the front here that means this whole back end you have room to create your welding and basically gussets and all that kind of thing. So my plan is to completely over-engineer this in the same way that you over-engineer the front end when you're doing a front clip setup. So this thing's gonna be braced to all hell. It's probably gonna weigh like a class four hitch wood, but it's, um, I'm still gonna treat it like it's a class two or a class three to just be absolutely safe. So enough talking. Let's, uh, let's get started with knocking some paint off of it. Let's weld on some square tube and um, let's get this thing going. It should go pretty quick.
Two hours later.